Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're always on the lookout for inexpensive Android TV boxes and there's a new one from Xiaomi called the Mi Box S that you can get at Walmart here in the United States for $59. I believe it's available in other parts of the world also for around the same price and that's a pretty good deal for an official Android TV box but unfortunately it is no different than the Mi Box we saw about two years ago. It's pretty much the same exact hardware but we're going to take a look at it anyhow in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what this little box can and can't do. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Again, this costs $59. It's got the same processor as the prior version. It's a Cortex A53. It's got a Mali 450 GPU. It has two gigabytes of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage, and it's running Android 8.1. Now, the one we looked at two years ago was running an older version of Android. It was a little glitchy. Uh, this one seems to be running a little better than I remembered the last one running, uh, but I think a lot of those issues were worked out with a software update on the prior edition, although many owners of the prior edition were frustrated that updates didn't always come out that quickly for it, and that might be the case with this one as well. And that's one of the issues you run into with a low-cost Android box. They don't get supported all that often. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on uh, what Xiaomi does with these moving forward. Uh, there is not much for ports on this one. You have an HDMI output over here. Uh, this will run a 4K signal at 60 hertz, and we'll take a look at its performance doing that in a minute. Uh, this is your analog audio output, but it also is an optical output. Right here, you've got a USB 2.0 port, so if you want to connect up Ethernet, uh, you can buy a separate Ethernet adapter like this one to plug into that port to get a more reliable network connection. It also supports 802.11 AC wireless, and I believe that is the one improvement on this box, that they made the wireless radio a little bit better. Uh, I didn't really notice much of a difference in my testing, but it, if you were having Wi-Fi problems before, maybe you might have an improvement here. Uh, but again, if you can, I would get one of those Ethernet adapters and pop it into that USB port for slightly better performance. And right here is where you plug in the power. And the remote looks a little different, but largely functions the same. You have voice control here at the top, so you can execute the Google Assistant commands on it. This will act like another Google voice control device on your home network, but you do have to push the button to get voice searches going. Uh, you've got your standard layout here for buttons. This is your app shelf here, uh, so you can quickly get access to all of your apps with a button push right there. Uh, Netflix is on the remote now, so they probably paid to get that position, which may have brought the cost down of the box for everybody. I believe this live button will pull up the Android TV live channels app, so we'll try that in a second. And you've got a volume rocker uh, here at the bottom. Uh, the build quality overall isn't fantastic on this box. I wouldn't expect it to be for the price point. But what I like about this costing $59 is that it's competitive with all of those cheap hacked together boxes we see on many online retailers that are either running the tablet version of Android on your television or are running a hacked version of Android TV. Uh, this at least is a legit Android TV box that should support all the features that Android TV delivers. So it's a safer buy than some of those no-name brands you might come across that have really good prices. So let's boot this up now and see exactly what it can do. So here we are on the home screen of the Mi Box. I'm running this on my 4K monitor here so you can get a feel for how it performs. Uh, it's the same hardware as before, but I think they've optimized the software a bit. It feels a little less sluggish than it did before. Uh, so apps load up relatively quickly here. Uh, you can get into things and start watching content. Uh, I did find that the Ethernet worked a little better than the Wi-Fi did. Uh, the other thing that I noticed is that it's handling 4K playback better than it used to. So on my original review, we were noticing some stuttering on Netflix, for example. Uh, we still had a little bit when the video started up in 4K, but it then uh, smoothed out once everything got cached up. So it was a much better viewing experience. And on Netflix, it was able to play back HDR video at 4K successfully but it did not support Dolby Atmos audio. That was something we saw on the Amazon Fire TV 4K stick the other day. Uh, this one doesn't support Atmos audio. It does support Dolby Digital Plus in Netflix and other apps that support it, but again, 
no Atmos out of this box, also no Dolby Vision HDR, which is another thing that the Amazon Stick supported. So there are some things that uh, this older hardware isn't going to do all that well. Another issue that I had when I first set it up was that I had to manually set up my display and audio settings. The box didn't properly detect my television resolution, uh, so it started off at 720p. And I had to jump into the video settings here to find the right 4K mode to switch it into. Uh, the other problem I had with it was that the audio uh, was not set to digital audio by default. When I went to the sound option here, it was uh, configured at PCM. So I had to manually switch it over here to auto to get some of these apps to work with Dolby Digital Audio. So I do run uh, my boxes through my home theater receiver and then my television's connected to the receiver. Some boxes detect things perfectly fine like the Amazon Stick did. Other boxes like this one do not. So you might find yourself digging around in those menus to get everything set up the way you want. Uh, but once you do get everything operating, it should work okay. And YouTube worked perfectly fine on the box here. YouTube, of course, is a Google-owned property. So when you've got an official Google operating system on here, uh, everything should work just fine. So we had no problem watching 1080p content. We also found that 4K content worked very, very well on here. In fact, I was running uh, 60 frames per second 4K content with no drop frames on my OLED set upstairs. It looked great and played back great. Uh, it's a better experience than I remember the prior uh, Mi Box Edition giving us with YouTube at 4K. And I think, again, this is a software thing that probably optimized some of the playback. So for uh, Netflix and YouTube, pretty good. Uh, the one thing you won't get on here, though, is Amazon Video. Uh, Amazon Video is only on the uh, NVIDIA Shield TV for Android boxes right now. So if you are heavily invested in the Amazon ecosystem, you might want to see if your smart television has an Amazon app already uh, or look at another box like the Amazon Fire Stick, which of course has its own Prime app on there, but you will not find Prime Video here on the Mi Box. Now, if you're a cord cutter, you're probably going to want to check and see if your provider offers an Android TV application. Uh, that's going to be different than an Android phone application, uh, so you may want to get in touch with them first. I found Sling is on here, PlayStation View is available, YouTube TV is, but it doesn't look like Direct TV and a few others uh, are available. So you want to just, again, double check on what's there for you. Now, as many of you know, I am a roll-your-own cord cutter. I've got an HD Home Run TV tuner on my network. Uh, in full disclosure, they're an occasional sponsor here on the channel, but I've been a client of theirs long before uh, they became a client of mine. And what I can do here with the Live button is just click on it, and that'll pull up the Android TV Live TV interface, and I can go ahead and get a channel guide here and watch live television. There's also a DVR component built into this that uh, you can use with external storage if you want. Uh, so you're able to do that natively through Android if you have a compatible TV tuner connected to it or on your network. Uh, it also supports, of course, the HD Home Run application. And uh, one of the things that HD Home Run has available is a uh, cable TV tuner, and that allows you to watch your cable TV subscriptions with the use of a cable card. And if I scroll down here to one of the DRM protected channels that uh, is on my cable system, namely HBO, I found that it does work on this box because it is an official Android TV box. You might see it asking for your location when you first initiate it, uh, but once you do that, uh, you should be good to go. And We'll pull up an HBO movie here in progress. It does give you that little audio message initially, and then the movie will come up and start playing there for you. So uh, DRM support is here if you are an HD Home Run Prime user like I am, and it's also going to work with other network TV tuners that are compatible with Android TV, along with directly connected TV tuners as well. Now, unfortunately, the box does not do a very good job at home theater tasks. Uh, so it will run Kodi and Plex and uh, some of the apps you might be using currently in your home theater setup. But if you are someone who likes to play Blu-ray movies over your network like I do, uh, it doesn't support 24p playback switching automatically. And that didn't work in Kodi or in Plex. And the original Mi Box had this issue as well. You can manually put it into 24p, but that's kind of a pain. Uh, the other issue that I ran into with it is that it doesn't support lossless audio pass-through. Uh, so it won't do uh, DTS HD or Dolby True HD or Atmos if your movies support that. So you'll get the digital audio through Dolby Digital, but you won't get 
the best possible quality and again you'll have some frame rate issues as well so those apps will run you can play your blu-ray 1080p movies but again uh, not a very good experience there it also choked a lot when i tried playing some of my 4k blu-ray movies over the network so as a home theater box stick to the nvidia shield if you're looking for something running android but I did find it worked quite well as a Chromecast destination. So if you load up a supported app like HBO Go here and select your Mi Box on the list, it will connect to it automatically over the network and you can start uh, streaming your content to it. Uh, some of the cheaper boxes we found that were running the hack together Android TV operating system generally did not like HBO Go and Netflix because they do have some copy protection on them. But as you'll see here, the movies start up just fine uh, Chromecasting here over my network. So that was one good thing to see uh, working on the Mi Box here. And it also integrates well with other Google services. You've got the Assistant built in here. So if I push the button here, tell me the weather in New York City tomorrow we can get Google Assistant kind of responses to things. It's not the fastest, unfortunately, as you can see here. It does take a little bit. I also found that sometimes it takes the box a second or two to get ready to take my voice input after pushing the button. So there are some things here that this older hardware doesn't do all that well. And it can also be a destination for your Google Home devices or Google Assistant apps. So I can say, play House of Cards on Mi Box 4. And what will happen here is the Google Assistant will get that command and then uh, execute it here and drop me off on Netflix exactly where I left off. And it also supports turning on the television, but you do have to enable that feature in the settings menu here. Uh, so what you can do is go all the way down to HDMI CEC right here and just make sure that CEC switch is turned on. And that should get some of those power on commands over to your compatible TV. I will say though that I usually leave this off because I have an OLED television uh, that one night turned itself on because my wife accidentally Chromecasted something up to it and it didn't shut off afterward and the image was up all night with it. So just be careful with this, especially if you have OLED or another type of TV like plasma that's susceptible to burn in. But you can uh, have it turn on the TV and start playing your favorite content with a voice command on any of your Google devices in the house. And one last thing to take a look at and that is gaming because this is an Android box and therefore you can download Android emulators to it for for example. So we're running an old uh, PlayStation 1 game here just to see how well it can handle some of the mid-90s consoles. Uh, so I think you could probably get away with the PlayStation 1 here. It's not perfect, but it feels playable. Uh, you could also get a, a bunch of the 8 and 16-bit games running on here quite nicely as well, but nothing really beyond that. Uh, it does support Bluetooth game controllers. I am feeling a bit of lag here as I'm playing through with the emulator, so you'll probably want to tweak things a little bit or use a wired controller. Uh, but again, nonetheless, it's a uh, not a capable gaming machine, but something that uh, can play games. Uh, and of course, you can play a lot of the uh, popular Android games that are out there as well. You know, all the uh, the casual games like Pac-Man 256 here and others, uh, whatever you find in the App Store, should run uh, pretty well on here just because these games are targeted at this kind of hardware. So altogether, it's not a bad box for $59. There are certainly better ones out there that cost more. But if you are on a budget or just looking for a secondary uh, television box to hook up, it's pretty decent for that. And it's nice that it's actually running with a real version of Android TV that's not hacked together like we see on some of those other devices we've looked at here on the channel. There doesn't seem to be any DRM issues or other kinds of compromises here. And it works, and that is a good thing. If it costs $79, I wouldn't be so excited about it. But for $59, not bad for what it is. But if you want the best Android TV box, the best is still the NVIDIA Shield. It's a superb device, very nicely performing box, uh, much better than this one, of course, but it also costs more money. So you can make your decision based on what your budget might be looking for, but it does seem to be working much better than it did two years ago, and I'm comfortable recommending it at the $59 price point. Before I head out, though, I just wanted to show you something that was kind of funny about this remote. So they did add a, an app button here on the left-hand side, and one of the criticisms I've been hearing about uh, the new interface on Android TV is that they shifted over to this content-centric thing that takes a lot of effort to get exactly the way you want. You got to go in and configure where everything shows up on the list here and what you want to see on it. And your apps have been kind of hidden behind this other button here that you had to navigate to just to get access to 
all of your apps on one spot. Uh, so this button here now simplifies that process. You can push the button and get into it. So rather than fix the interface, they just added a button to the remote. It's not uh, Xiaomi's fault, but Google's fault. But I just thought that was kind of funny. It looks like maybe they've been hearing some bad pushback from customers about the changes they made and added a button to uh, get you back to those apps whenever you want to browse by the app as opposed to browsing by the content. So that's going to do it for our Mi Box S review. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Too Much Sauce, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.